Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks tutorial. I hope you're all well and staying safe. In this video, we're going to be learning how to create a anti-wheel slip for a train here in Stormworks. We'll go over two different methods on how to get this set up. It's relatively simple and easy, but before we get started, if you're enjoying these videos, comment below everything else you'd like to see in any of our future videos. Why there? Don't forget that like and subscribe button and make a little bell icon to be notified my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So I said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. So getting started, we're going to be working with a actual way to stop wheel spin. Now this is a quite a big issue, especially if you have quite a lot of power and a lot of weight on your trains. You'll see here, I've just got a very, very basic example of a train here. Uh, medium sized electric motor, some automatic generators and things that are generating power. Quite a lot of weight on here to obviously replicate a heavy train. And pretty much what you can see is if we get the battery on and we put it forward, there is a ton of wheel slip on this. So this is what we want to try and prevent. Now, the nice thing is that the wheel, uh, wheel train wheel bases have got a little node on them that tells the system that it has wheel slip. So it's great. You can use that straight off the bat. And we're going to be doing two different systems here. We'll do one that works on the seat. So if you want to control your train using the seat, another one that uses a throttle lever. Now we'll start with the throttle lever one. It's relatively easy and simple to use. All you need to do is get a throttle lever. We can then place it down. Uh, I recommend you configure it um, to probably about 10% to be a little bit more realistic, but this is completely up to you on what you want this on. 10% um, is good, let's do minimum zero, maximum one, and start value zero. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take that, connect that over to our electric throttle, and we're going to then tell this train that, hey, if you have wheel slip, go and reduce the throttle. That's pretty much about it for getting it done on a throttle. You can then go and spawn this in, and make sure you have, of course, if you're in advance, you have electric connected. So I'm just gonna connect our electric in and spawn in again and jump in the seat here, get the throttle on and press E to get started. And you'll notice that if we do get any wheel slip, yep, it goes and stops the throttle and brings it down. We can continue doing it and continue doing it. And every time it reads that there is any type of wheel slip, it will reduce the throttle and bring it down to a stable level. And then you can continue gradually bringing it up and up and up and up and up until it doesn't actually have any more wheel slip on it. Okay, the one negative thing about this one is that you don't have any reverse on it. Now, the easiest way to just simply get a reverse feature on this train would be easily to just get a button. Okay, grab a toggle button for this so we can switch between forward and reverse. We're going to get a switch box, simple numerical switch box, and you also want a invert. Now you can build this all inside a controller if you want to, but we're just going to go and get it set up here. Once you've got that, make sure you've got electricity connected and we're just going to simply take that throttle lever that's coming out from here. We're going to extend it to the off. Okay. And then from that switch box, we're going to get it to connect to our throttle. And then we're going to say, Hey, if you have, if sorry, if you have reverse, we're going to go and switch that on. We're going to take a inverted number from our throttle and then that's then gonna go to our electric motor. So it's switching between the, so it's inverting it if we're in reverse here. Pretty simple. We can then go and bring it on again, jump in the seat, power, throttle forward. Great, so we're going forwards. Let's go and bring that down to zero again. And let's put it in reverse. And now let's go forward again. And you can see no wheel slip. We're going fully backwards. Okay, a little bit of wheel slip, but it stops. Okay, because the controller went and brought it down again. Okay, so that's an easy way of doing it with a throttle. It's nice and simple, nice and easy. The next way we could do it is also using the seat. So you can get rid of all this logic that we don't need anymore. And we can use the seat to actually go and control that and still not have any wheel slip. Now, there's different ways of doing it. Pretty much what we're going to be using is an up down. Okay, so you're just gonna get a simple up down reading over here. And we're going to go and say, we use a threshold gate, and that's how we're going to read our WS from our actual seat itself. So you can see here, WS is gonna go into the two threshold gates. And we're going to say, hey, if this is between minus one and minus one, and if this one is one and one, okay, so we got those two numbers here, 
The one that's going down is going to go to bring it down. And the one that's going on one is going to go to bring it up. So one to one is two up. Okay. And that's what we're going to use to go and control R throttle. Okay. So if it reads it up, it's going to go forward. If it reads it down, it's going to go down. Make sure you go and configure your up and down here. Put a zero here, put a one. You can great once again, change the sensitivity. I like 10%. It's up to you if you want to use 10% or not. Okay. And in theory that would work, but we don't have any wheel slip connected to that. So what we're going to use is we're going to use an OR. Okay. Once we have an OR gate down, we can place that down and we can say, okay, if you have any wheel slip, then we're going to tell you to go down. So we're going to go and add that on there and we're going to take the threshold gate and add it to there. So if you're telling it to go down, it will go down. Or if it's got wheel slip, it's going to go down. The only problem with this is that it's going to, obviously you're telling it to go forward and it's going to get wheel slip. So it's not going to move anywhere. So we need to shut off this gate while we have any wheel slip. So to do that, we can use a simple saw. And pretty much what this does is this says, if you are only receiving one signal, send a signal through. If you're receiving two signals, do not send anything through. So pretty much we can take this threshold gate here from our up, which is to go forward, and our wheel slip over here. And we're saying, if you got wheel slip and you want to go forward, do not send anything to go up to this controller. Okay, simply like that. And you can try and test it out. Now, I know there is gonna be one small issue with it, but you'll see in a couple seconds. If we tell it to go forward, okay, it's going to go forward and it's actually going to stop the wheel slip. Okay, but it's still, it still has a little bit and it keeps on, it will keep on going on, off, on, off, on, off. So what I like to usually do is what I'll go and do is add a capacitor. Okay, and the capacitor on here is going to say hold the wheel slip for at least a couple seconds. So it doesn't go on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Okay, so we're going to go and get a capacitor. Let me press it down here. And then we're going to say from the wheel slip, go to capacitor and then whatever the wheel slip was connected to, send that over to that from the capacitor. Okay. And you can then click onto the capacitor and tell it how many seconds. So it's a charge to zero. And then how many seconds would you like it to hold? For? We're going to ask it to hold for 1.5 seconds. Uh, you can once again play around with this completely up to you. That way we don't get on off, on off, on off of the wheel slip. Now we can go and increase the power. And as soon as it detects any wheel slip, there we go. It will hold it for 1.5 seconds, then release it. Hold it for 1.5 seconds, release it, and so on and so forth. So that completely reduces your wheel slip on the train. You can see here, we're just getting every now and then, we're getting a little bit of wheel slip and the throttle is going and dropping down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very, very useful. Obviously, if you need a reverse on this, it's the same principle. All we need to go and do is we need to add a invert gates and we also need a button to go and invert that it's very simple very basic but i don't know i thought it's a cool little thing if you're using the limited set speed controller you won't have any of this wheel step issue or you shouldn't really have any wheel step issue but there we go there's two different ways of setting this up either using the seat or using a throttle and you never have any wheel step ever again in the game and on your trains so i think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.